Welcome everybody to the 2021 Eritrea North American bike race that was held in Washington DC in uh, August of uh, 2021, August 13th and August 14th. This is the, the men's A race, uh, the race has just started. This is my camera, uh, my name is Burhani Kasai, everybody calls me Casey. Uh, sorry about the commentary in English, hope it's okay for everybody, I guess um, we'll have an audience um, that will be able to uh, hear everything that I'm saying. So anyways, uh, race has started, uh, we have a lot of people, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's over 25 riders in our race at the beginning, um, and uh, soon after the race started, I think the pace starts to pick up, and um, we're going to see it thinning out pretty quick. There are a few names in here in this race uh, that are also who are not Eritreans, like this guy right here with, on the right side who has the US uh, jersey and the guy on the left with the purple jersey, my teammate Super Dave Osborne, who are like U USA uh, cycling um, category one riders. Uh, this guy right here in the, the US jersey, he's a junior 2021 Grand Fondo US champion. Uh, amazing kid, Jonah Kelly of Kelly Benefits. Uh, he had a really good ride, um, a good race, and enjoyed it. And um, so, um, yeah, the race has started, and I'll continue to comment, comment on it, and hopefully um, you'll enjoy it. So it's important to know, and as you can tell, the road is not closed for us. It's a park in Washington, D.C. It's called uh, the Haynes Point Park. And um, there are a lot of riders who are a little bit nervous because our pack is uh, kind of like compact when we're going around uh, the cars and other riders on the, who are in the park. And uh, the speed as it goes up, and not everybody's in the same level of fitness. You will see a lot of nervous uh, folks early on. But like I said, the race uh, is going to start to thin out and the people are going to be um, uh, start to get dropped and uh, disconnected from the main group and eventually it will settle down. But uh, yeah, there were a few nervous uh, folks out there. So as the ride was going on, at this point, uh, as you can see, it's kind of like somewhat single file and the speed was uh, quite high. Uh, I think we're doing like about 26, 27 miles an hour, maybe more. Um, so I wanted to know who was setting the pace up front um, and make sure that uh, there were no gaps. And uh, there was a surprise for us. There was a very strong rider who was making this uh, pace stay up as high as it is for pretty much most of the ride and all the ride actually. So as you can see, at the front, there's a guy with a white jersey who was pretty much staying the, at the front and drilling it. 
and we eventually found out that is Natna El Masmer. It was our first time riding with him. We had no idea who he was. At least I did not know who he was. Uh, most of us did not. Uh, we thought he was another Eritrean who had come to race the race, but he's actually um, a professional uh, racer from uh, Switzerland who had just moved to the United States. Uh, has a UCI license, really fast, really fit, strong rider, and uh, you can see how uh, absolutely strong he was um, in this race. Um, and he kept at it and he kept on moving the pace so high and he's the one who eventually causes all the havoc uh, the people getting dropped and the gaps forming and so forth and uh, an amazing guy Right here, um, there goes KB uh, Kabrom uh, chasing after the break or the gap that has opened up because of Nathanael. Uh, there is uh, Jonah Kelly of Kelly Benefits and Simon just got up to them and Kabrom got to them and eventually I get to them. Uh, this looked pretty good, this looked pretty uh, fast up here. We did open up a gap. But uh, eventually everybody did end up closing uh, right behind us at this point because uh, the pace kind of slowed down. Um, but Nathanael was full gas the whole time. Here he is right here. His form is unbelievable. His cadence is unbelievable. I mean, this guy is just and an amazing character as well. After the race, we eventually got to meet him. Amazing kid. Um, yeah, and uh, this was pretty much full gas. As you can see, um, Kelly Benefits is a team here in Washington DC, pretty strong solid teams, that's why you see uh, a few of the jerseys and the shorts. The plan was on and initially, uh, it would have been to race uh, state by state, uh, so uh, Dallas has a team uh, pretty much with the most numbers uh, of Eritreans that came 
from out of town. Um, and uh, you know, Sirak is also here, Sirak Tuckley from uh, Minnesota, um, and uh, so forth. And we have people from Atlanta and, and uh, other states. Um, our uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, group unfortunately did not race as a Washington, D.C. group just due to some uh, miscommunication and so uh, that's why we were not riding as a team uh, as, a, as a state uh, team um, and but rather we raced uh, separately uh, which kind of ended up uh, being our disadvantage this year uh, hopefully uh, we'll fix it for next year and uh, come and, and ride uh, together meaning uh, me and Simon for example he's right here uh, and Esrom who's in front of uh, Simon with the Eritrean shorts all of us uh, and then KB uh, Kabron who's the Eritrean jersey right in front of them for example we are not uh, we were not riding as a, a team from Washington DC even though we all live around here but uh, the plan is to fix that next year Elmasmer and uh, two riders, uh, Saeed and um, I believe Kelly, had uh, gotten away from us. And Simon decided, Simon Eyob decided that this gap was too dangerous, and he did a monster pull to close that gap. And uh, he brought us uh, right back to them. And uh, we were um, uh, pulling about maybe over 30 to 33 miles an hour right at this uh, junction. And uh, he brought us right back home. And Nathaniel would not stop going full gas the entire time. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.
sound right, boy. Right, boy. So at this junction right here, uh, the attack that you just saw that was Fernando Dunco and Said Arana. Said is a uh, Colombian. They uh, took off and um, nobody responded. Um, and we, um, I did not respond, and nobody responded. But you know, we had just had a pretty fast lap, the lap before, and uh, they just took off. And that was a good move because we never saw them after this. Super David Osborne. He's my teammate on the US team that I ride with. He's been racing for the past uh, 35 years. Has like uh, over 500 wins in the USA. I called him last minute to come and ride with us in this race uh, so he can be part of my help. Um, but um, he was tired. They had been riding the entire weekend. It was a last minute thing. And this was on a Friday. He usually doesn't train on Fridays because uh, his uh, workout days are. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then takes a Friday off. So we had had a hard day the day before. And uh, this was a pretty uh, tough pace uh, ride to be in. He did his best to help me. Um, but as you can say, um, there's uh, a bunch of riders behind us. Uh, very few people want to chase. Very few people want to go come to the front. Um, and that gap that happened with uh, Ferlagot and Said, uh, that gap just became big immediately.
So as you can see, Nakna had attacks again over here. Um, everybody starts looking around. We thought he was just going to the two riders right there. That's Daniel Fusahaye and uh, Super Dave Osborne. But he blows right past them and keeps going. I try to go after that, after him. Um, everybody's kind of like uh, responding also behind me. And I was uh, hoping that we would get um, uh, some kind of like an organized chase to make sure that we get back onto Nathmael. Uh, but uh, it took a long time for people to come around me and uh, I just uh, kind of like uh, sat up, I uh, slowed down the speed to see if someone was coming around and nobody came around. It took a while for someone to come after, uh, after him. It sound right, boy. organization of the chase was not going to be established and nobody really wanted to go full gas or chase after him. I purposely moved to the left because I had done a few pulls with nobody really coming around me and I decided to make sure that all these people that are behind me they have to come to the front and see what they will do or if they are willing to work uh, but it did not look like that was going to happen and that was it and that man was gone uh, and that was the last time we saw him it sound right boy As you can see right here, Simon is also frustrated uh, about the chase not being organized. He had done a lot of work and he was not willing to do any more uh, hard pulls while everybody else was sitting. Um, so uh, there's uh, probably about 10 of us at this point or 10 or 15, 12 of us left from the big group that you saw at the beginning of the ride. Everybody's behind, um, not willing to come to the front and work. So at this point, uh, we have no organization and uh, that was it. It was very demoralizing, but that's cycling. Um, and we start playing cat and mouse at this point. Uh, we're just watching each other. Um, and uh, it worked to nothing else advantage as well because he was going steady, full gas up front.
check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Jersey, uh, Daniel, um, he's all from Argentina, um, he rides with me as well, uh, he's not on my team but um, came out there to help me uh, on this race, I tell him to rotate and uh, try to have a steady chase going because pretty much as you can tell, uh, this, the chase was not going to be established um, and happen, so whatever we could uh, to keep this uh, group moving. I just told them to come to the front and rotate as much as they could. Um, and the girl right here, pretty strong lady, her name is Megan, a very solid racer, also came in at the last minute. She doesn't ride or train on Fridays, uh, but decided uh, she'll come out and give it a try and give me uh, some help. And uh, that's what you see over here. sound right boy check the mic and make sure it sound right boy
sound right, boy. tell from this rotation not everybody that's actually in this group is working that means that they're just basically sitting back there and letting us do the work and just watching I mean I could have easily done that I could have decided just to sit back and not work as well but um, you know we waited all this year uh, for this race and uh, we wanted to make sure that we do our best I'm not um, complaining or regretting doing the work that Simon, myself, uh, Hadish Allen uh, were doing. Uh, we, did, we gave it our best shot. We worked full gas. We actually put in a lot of effort uh, to keep this rotation alive, to keep the chase alive. But um, as you can tell, uh, not everybody wanted to participate. And of course, after a while, we realized that and uh, the chase eventually is going to lose its uh, impetus.
right here where we catch uh, Jonah in the US jersey on the left I'm not sure if he waited or we caught him uh, so at this moment we only have uh, Nathan Adam Smear, uh, Saeed Arana and Falago Denko up ahead of us we were hopeful we'd catch him uh, but since the chase was uh, disorganized uh, we were not sure, I was not sure, and we were also not getting how far any time information on how far they were ahead of us.
here um, we start seeing uh, dark skies and the wind picking up uh, like a summer storm was about to uh, come down on DC. It has been happening for the past uh, few days uh, late in the evening um, and uh, we thought a, a thunderstorm was going to come down and we were thinking maybe uh, they could contact uh, the officials to show on the race to uh, maybe one lap instead of two laps to go because it's two laps to go at this point but uh, we figured that was not going to be the case uh, because uh, the breakaway probably have been told they got two laps to go as well so we end up doing the whole uh, two laps but uh, my battery on the camera dies and did not get the last lap we have a lot to go but the battery on my computer dies on my uh, uh, camera and this is now the sprint after on the last lap we're going for the sprint this is me right here in the blue this is the camera from my teammate David Osborne uh, we're coming in for the sprint this was quite uh, uh, scary uh, because uh, I was waiting for the last minute to go to sprint but I see Kaboom here on the left and he was going full gas, I thought he was going to go all the way um, and then you see the guy on the right side, he's coming to me all the way to the left he's kind of squeezing me and I see some cars ahead of me on the left that were parked, double parked you're going to see them right there and I had to kind of like uh, take it easy a little bit and that was the sprint for uh, fourth place and that was the end of the race it was pretty fast, it was pretty fun, I hope you enjoyed it
through the end of the race. Um, uh, glad nobody crashed, nobody went down. It was uh, pretty okay and safe. Uh, these are some great pictures by Fafi Photography. Uh, I thought I'm doing an awesome job. Thank you, sir. And uh, we did uh, have a, ended up having a, a great race. Um, and uh, we hope to see you next year. Um, Nathan Edmasmer got second, uh, first every tram. Our average speed was 22.7 miles per hour. Um, and uh, it was pretty uh, fun and interesting.